Hi again, we are in the part 3 of the fluidization lecture. Uh, this is a short lecture on classification of powders. So, this is a gel dart classification of powders. There are different types of classifications, but for the fluidized bit uh, application, uh, gel dart classification is a popular one. So, in this uh, classification, you notice powders or particles are divided into four groups, which are A, B, C and D. And these groups are actually divided according to the particle sizes. So, the group C is the smallest particle size, then followed by group A. And then group B has a small range of particle size. And then you have group D for bigger particle size. So this group A actually includes quite a, uh, a bigger range of particle size. So each of this group of powders has its distinct characteristics. So the most obvious one is the group C, which is the smaller particle size, is cohesive. Cohesive means uh, the Van der Waals interaction between the particles are stronger. Just like how you see in a flour or cement. So they are actually closely packed together. So that is cohesive. Uh, for group A, it's a range of non-bubbling fluidization. Uh, Actually, bubbling and non-bubbling. If you notice, when we saw a video in the lecture of part 2, that was group A powders. So, the group A powder was uh, giving a range of fluidization from non-bubbling to bubbling fluidization. So, the a simple, uh, uh, one of the example of this group uh, A powder is cracking catalyst. So, catalyst can be bubbling as well as non-bubbling and then we have group B powders which will start bubbling at UMF so that is the most obvious characteristics uh, the types of solids examples are uh, sand building sand so it's uh, so you can imagine uh, the coarseness of the particle like the sand and then group D are the coarser solids much bigger uh, like uh, gravels, gravels are bigger stones that are used uh, to make road or, or buildings. Coffee beans, rice, uh, these are group D powders. Okay, So each of these group uh, gives a different characteristics or uh, it gives a, a different uh, reaction in terms of big expansion, um, bubbling properties, mixing as well as spouting. So you can have a look and see how it acts. So the bed expansion uh, is the highest in group A. So group B gives a moderate bed expansion while group D and C has low uh, bed expansion. It's due to the characteristics of the uh, particles. And then for bubble properties, the cohesive does not give you bubbling. The group A can bubble. The bubbles can actually split or coalesce. Coalesce means it, uh, two bubbles joining together to become bigger bubbles. So that's uh, coalesce. And then split is bigger bubbles splits into smaller bubbles. So it can achieve maximum bubble size uh, as big as the uh, tank that is a tank or a, a reactor or a column that is filled in and then group B and group D has uh, can also bubble and there's no limit to its size it, it can go really big okay and then spouting spouting is um, the one uh, that we saw in the first lecture for poor fluidization where only one part of the um, particles were, were fluidized so that is called spouting the rest of the bed uh, was not moving but only one part was moving 
so that's called uh, spouting so usually group C and group A does not give uh, spouting is quite uh, is much easier to fluidize group A group B uh, can give you uh, only in a shallow bed it gives spouting but group D uh, can give uh, spouting uh, even in deep beds because the particles are coarse so uh, it's easy uh, spouting can easily happen okay so you can have a look into this table so now let's look into uh, each uh, particles so uh, the rest of the slides are going to be usually um, videos so we have watched the video for group a fluidized air so let me see if we can watch it again Right, probably we don't have to because we've watched it in the part one so here are some pictures of um, the videos so uh, this was what we watched uh, in the video this was what we watched in the video in part one of uh, fluidization so this is group a so you can see it can either be uh, a simple bit expansion of fluidization without bubbling and then when it collapses it collapses right back into the um, bit height that it was before fluidization and it can also uh, be bubbling fluidization so it goes through uh, you can uh, if you if you watch the video you will notice some of the bubbles breaking up and some of the bubbles joining and form a bigger bubble so that's uh, group a so there's also a video for group B which you can watch um, in the um, YouTube link that I've given below. So this is what you will watch for the uh, group B bubbles powders. So if you notice the, um, the bubbles um, on the first, uh, first picture, this one is at low gas velocity. So you have uh, reasonably sized bubbles. But when the velocity increases, uh, the fluidization becomes aggressive and the bubbles are also bigger. So the bubbles increases in size with distance from the distributor with increasing gas velocity. So from this point, as it goes up, you notice it increases in size. It also, even for low velocity, it gets bigger when it gets away from the distributor so the distributor is usually at the bottom here this is where uh, there's a distributor uh, plate uh, which has nozzles for the gas to pass through so this is group b so this one um, i've shown uh, how the bubbles coalesce that means join uh, the small bubbles will join and then it erupts at the bit, bit surface so if you watch the video you can you please observe the bubbles so this is this is the first um, shot I took and then in the following shot if you notice this this region yeah it is growing bigger and this too is coalescing see it's coalescing and then it got bigger because the two has joined and then as it reaches the surface it erupts it erupts and that's it it's gone okay and the and the and the whole uh, bubbling repeats okay so this is group b then we have group c so i've also attached a link for group uh, c so this is an interesting one Group C powders are the very fine cohesive powders. They are actually incapable of fluidization in the strict sense. In group C powders, the interparticle forces are large compared with the inertial forces on the particles. As a result, the particles are unable to achieve the separation they require to be totally supported by the drag and buoyancy forces, and true fluidization does not occur. 
Bubbles as such do not appear. Instead, the gas flow forms channels through the powder. In small vessels, sometimes the entire bed will lift as a plug. Since the particle fully supported by the gas, the pressure loss across the bed is always less than the apparent weight of the bed per unit cross-sectional area. Consequently, measurement of the bed pressure up is one means of detecting this group C behavior if visual observation is inconclusive. Fluidization of sorts can be achieved with the assistance of a mechanical stirrer or some vibration. So that was uh, group C powder. So if you notice, you see there's a bulk uplifting. So this is um, the hump that is caused before fluidization can happen. So remember I told you the hump where the minimi minimum fluidization point is. Uh, so it is higher for finer uh, powders. So this sort of powders will require uh, additional uh, mechanical assistance like stirrers uh, for it to fluidize. And the final one is um, fluidize bit Z, uh, D. So if you notice with this uh, group D, spouting was taking place. This is spouting. That's what you saw in the video. The fluidized bed can also cause slugging. Slugging is, uh, you can watch the video to see what slugging is. Uh, it's actually like you, you see a big um, void here. So a big chunk moves above. So that is slugging. So there's a video for both this lugging, so you can watch it. And so this expansion of uh, fluidized uh, bed uh, can give different pressure drop and uh, velocity mapping. So for bubbling, simple bubbling, slugging, channeling, jetting and spouting. So we have um, a different types of uh, pattern the relationship between pressure drop and you so uh, bubbling is good but uh, slugging channeling uh, even jetting and spouting is not uh, desirable in uh, fluidized bed uh, because we want it to be homogeneous in some cases uh, yeah slugging slugging uh, slugging is is too big of the bubble size so that uh, decreases the uh, interaction of the gas phase to the particles because usually when the bubble, bubbles are big these bubbles are actually unused so so we have to adjust the system in order to achieve a, a more homogeneous fluidized bed okay so um, I've uh, attached a few links uh, of the application of uh, fluidization so they are quite interesting if you would like to um, watch it. So there are various applications uh, that uses fluidization. So that's all. We end the fluidization uh, part. So I have a very short uh, assignment for this part 3. So this is question 1 and question 2. So please answer them and upload it onto a spectrum. Um, for question one, please give uh, simple answers uh, and you give two examples of each group powder so you find something that is different from what is present in the slides. Okay, so for the significant, uh, significant characteristics, uh, you point out the significant uh, characteristics. It's not the same table that I presented. So your table should give the significant characteristics of the um, powders. Uh, so in uh, question two, um, I want you to know. Um, I want you to uh, uh, give me an explanation 
if this each powder can interchange characteristics during fluidization so at which condition this happens so give your answers in simple sentences don't give me big paragraphs uh, so you will have to find this on your own yeah that's all thank you i see you again in the next lecture